Hey, what's going on guys? Timo here. And unless you've been living under a rock, you would have recently seen the iPhone 6s being announced. Now, ever since the iPhone 3G, Apple have been releasing these S model phones. These S models look basically the same as their numbered counterpart, and usually it's not until you scratch the surface that you will find where the updates are really hiding. These updates are more than just aluminium deep. So here's everything you need to know about the iPhone S models. So Apple haven't officially said what the S stands for, but it's probably pretty safe to say it stands for speed, given the biggest changes you see with any S model is on the inside. Although having said that, with the iPhone 4S it could have stood for Surrey, being that the iPhone 4S shipped with it. Or for the iPhone 5S it could have been for security, as the iPhone 5S was the very first iPhone to feature a fingerprint reader. And in the case of the iPhone 6S, strength would fit quite nicely, because man it is one strong phone. And maybe, just maybe, the 7S will stand for storage. Here's hoping. So excluding the original iPhone, which didn't get an S version, you can very easily see a trend amongst Apple's release cycle. The successor of the 3G was the 3GS, the iPhone 4's older brother was the 4S, followed by the 5, 5S, 6, and so on and so forth, coming to the 6S. Now with these phones, Apple took a tick-tock sort of approach. And it's pretty safe to say the next iPhone will be the iPhone 7. So in plain English, the tick means Apple releases a redesigned, re-engineered, and updated iPhone, and they give it a number, like 4, 5, or 6. Now these phones are usually different from their predecessor in almost every way. The internals are upgraded, the battery shrunk, and the iPhone is thinner. The new materials are incorporated. This makes the iPhone look completely different overall. Now the following year is what's known as the TOC year, which is what this year is. This is where Apple takes their redesigned iPhone and they refine it even further. They fix up issues with the previous year, bump up the specs, whack a new camera in it, improve the speed, and give it at least one or two new major features. For the iPhone 3GS, this was video capabilities, hands down. Siri for the 4S, a fingerprint reader for the 5S, and the new 3D touch technology for the 6S. One way to look at it is Apple alternating between a physical redesign for the numbered iPhone, and then an internal upgrade for the corresponding S models. In doing this though, Apple isn't solely limited to cosmetic changes in the numbered iPhone, as we've seen them upgrade the internals and feature set before. But what's important to note is that this isn't the focal point of these numbered models. The same goes for the S model as well. This year we saw some cosmetic changes with the new 6S model, like a change in materials. Well, actually Apple didn't really have much of a choice about that one. There's no more FCC logos, and there's an ever so slightly bigger footprint. And most of these cosmetic changes pale in comparison to the internal updates they received. And if anything, the S model is probably the most revolutionary version of the two. See, without being able to change the exterior of the phone much, Apple is forced to experiment and innovate, often in ways which have led the smartphone industry as a whole. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'm no Apple fanboy, and Apple didn't innovate every single year. But I like it when companies come up with new ideas and compete against each other. As a consumer, it's great. And I don't know of many companies other than Intel which force themselves to innovate in the same way Apple does. With the non-S model receiving the bulk of the changes, you'd think people would pick up one of them over the S model, right? Well, the opening weekend sale numbers would tell the opposite story. Apple sold nearly 2.4 times as many iPhone 4S models as they did the iPhone 4. The 5S has 1.8 times as many sales compared to the 5, and 1.3 times more iPhone 6S phones were sold as compared to the iPhone 6. Now, this could be partly due to the sustained growth by Apple, but I imagine their innovation plays a massive part. Either way, the iPhone's total sales are well over 700 million, which is crazy. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think about Apple's S model phones. And as always, thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed.